live spaces uh, as well as a video cast. So I'm holding my phone for that reason. If you see me holding, why is he holding his phone? Uh, this is, we're doing a live uh, X spaces at the same time as a video stream. Uh, so I'll be able to uh, take some questions from, obviously as many questions as possible from the audience and as well from people online. Um, but uh, as you can see, I'm obviously here in person. This is me, not, not a clone of me. Um, <laughs> and um, and, the, re and the, reason I, the, re the reason I'm here in person is because Pennsylvania is so important to the future of the world. So. You know, you, 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 <laughs> you, you, you show, you show, you show what, you show what matters by your actions, not your words. And my actions are: I'm here, I'm in Pennsylvania, um, and I'm here for a very important reason. Which, yeah, it's, it's which is. I can't emphasize. I can't emphasize enough that Pennsylvania is, I think, the linchpin in this election. And this election, I think, is going to decide uh, the fate of America, and in, as, along with the fate of America, the fate of uh, Western civilization. Yeah. 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 The Constitution be, to be upheld, yeah. uh, and, and and. You know, you know what? I, I'm I'm being told at times that these are like right-wing values. I'm like, are you, are you insane? <laughs> this, this is literally the fundamental values that made America what it is today. <laughs> and anyone who's against those things is fundamentally anti-American. And the hell with them. So, yeah, yeah. So, and, and you know, I, so I, I actually lived in, uh, in Pennsylvania for three years, by the way. I'm no stranger to the state. I lived in the city for three years. I went to school here. So, um, you know, so I, 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 I know the state. Um, I'm, not, I'm not some, you know, just arrived situation. You know, I've been here, spent three years of my life here. So, um, it's, a, it's a great state. Love it, you know. And, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was awesome. But you know, the thing is, like I was talking to um, friends of mine who, like, like when I went to, to Penn, um, it was very dangerous at the time, uh, but everyone thought it would get better over, t you know, it would get better as the years went on. Um, you know, one of the issues was like there would, it's, students would get killed from time to time, and, and that was, was pretty bad, obviously. Um, and I was talking to someone who recently graduated from Penn, they said, actually, it's worse. And I'm like, it's worse? What, what the hell is going on? You know? It, it's, like, it's like, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the reality is that if, if, if someone is a violent criminal, uh, uh, you know, uh, where they either are unable to control their violence or they like it, if you do not incarcerate them, they will hurt people. That's what it comes down to. So. So if, if you don't put hardened, hardened criminals in jail, they will, they will kill people. That's what it comes down to. And that's, unfortunately, the uh, situation we have here is, is that the Democratic Party will not put hardened criminals in, in prison. And, and so they roam free and they prey upon you um, and your kids and your family and your friends. This is insane. Um, I, how can we be you know, the most powerful country in the world, and, and, it's, and you're not, it's, it's not safe to walk around our cities. What the hell is going on? George Soros. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Soros, honestly, misanthropic. You know, he's, he's, I, I, for so, someone who has, um, you know, sort, sort of claims to be doing good, but actually he is not, you know. He, he is tearing down the fabric of society. Oh, and, so, terrible. Yeah. Um, so, but I think it's, 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 it's just unbelievable that we, that, that, like you should be able to feel safe walking around American cities. Um, 
And it's not just, you know, it's, Philadelphia has a challenge, um, New York has, got, has a challenge, uh, every major city in the US, like my, you know, my mom lives in New York, for example, three of her friends have been assaulted on the street this year. You know, it's, it's like, and it's getting worse. Um, and now, if, when she uh, takes her dog for a walk, she has to stay, you know, inside of the building so that, so she can call for help if need be. This is not the future we want. Um, and and if, we get, if we get four more years of this, I mean, we're gonna be fully Mad Max, you know? <laughs> and it's, it's, it's like, well, it's, it's nice to watch a Mad Max movie, but we don't wanna be in the Mad Max movie, okay? <laughs> So yeah, um, you know, and, and then the, the, the whole border thing is just insane. Um, you, know, you know, I always want to try to figure out what is the truth of the matter? What's really going on? So with, on the border situation, it's like, is, is it real or is it not real? So I went there in person and I just literally live streamed what I saw. And the, the, you know, our border looks like World War Z, okay? It's like zombie apocalypse, you know, it's insane. So this is, if you don't have a border, you don't have a country. Yeah, I mean, we're just saying like, you know, we, we, we have to have real borders. Um, and, or you, if you don't have real borders, you don't have a real country. And obviously as, as someone who's an immigrant, I'm pro-immigrant. I just wanna make sure that people who come here are gonna be assets to society. And that, that they're gonna raise our standard of living, you know? You know, it's, it's, I think it's like, I think the this, this sort of sports team analogy is a, is a good one. So, like, let's say you're, you know, pro sports team, you want to win the championship, then, well, you have aces on your team, obviously, because they help the whole team win, you know? So that say, the same is true for immigration. If, if, you know, if we have this sort of equivalent of, like, you know, Kobe Bryant or Steph Curry or LeBron or something like that, they want to join the team. Like, absolutely, of course. They all have, do you like winning? <laughs> yeah, okay. But if they can't play basketball, they shouldn't be joining. <laughs> so that, that's, a, that's real important. And um, yeah, and then something that doesn't get a lot of attention is the fact that the federal government is spending um, America into bankruptcy, uh, you know, the, the, which is crazy. It's sort of, uh, that, and that's really what leads to inflation is that when the, when the government spends more than it brings in, that's what causes inflation. Yeah, so it's just a pernicious tax. Um, so there has to be uh, much, we, we have to radically reduce the amount of government spending uh, so that we don't uh, rack up a, a debt that is impossible to repay and drive the country to bankruptcy. So. I mean, just basic stuff, really, you know. These shouldn't be controversial topics. <laughs> so it's just like normal. <laughs> Com common sense, exactly. Um, and, and you know, you're seeing all these attacks on freedom of speech, and they're like attacking me for freedom of speech. It's like, it's like, yo, that's the First Amendment, like literally the first one, you know? It was a, tells me it's a high priority. <laughs> and the reason they had the First Amendment was because, you know, the countries people came from, if you spoke your mind, you'd be imprisoned or killed. That's why you have it. That's really important. And, and then the right to bear arms is also really important. That's there to protect, you know. I mean, the, the Second Amendment is there to protect the First Amendment. So. As, as soon as the government can disarm the people, they can do anything they want. And you see, you've, we've seen this in one country after another. They take the guns away from the people, then they, then they do fake elections, and then the, the people try to protest and they just get shot. That's what happened in, in Venezuela recently. They had, a, they had a fake election, Maduro lost, uh, like massively lost, like, you know, 70% loss. And he's like, oh no, I won. And <laughs> everyone's like, oh, you didn't win. There were big protests in the street. But the thing is that Chavez, when he, went, when he came into power, took away everyone's guns. 
So now you're facing, you know, soldiers with assault rifles. Were you going to throw some sticks at them or something? Use finger guns? Um, it doesn't work. So Maduro, even though he lost the election, is still in power. And that's the, that's the kind of risk, risk that we face. So uh, but we've got to do everything possible to protect the, the, the Constitution. Um, and I think this is, uh, yeah. So the, the, you know, for all those reasons, that's why, you know, after, after thinking about it hard, it, it, it was very clear to me that uh, uh, Donald Trump has to, be, has to win this election. He really does. Um, yeah. And, and so I, I think the, the most important thing that, uh, that you can do, and what I'm asking everyone to do, is make sure that you're registered to vote, uh, that you, you know, that you, and, and then vote early, and, and then uh, talk to your friends and family and everyone you know to make sure that they're registered to vote, because Monday is the deadline for voting registration. Um, and honestly, this is, if, if there's ever a time to be a pest with your friends and family, this is the time. You know, just, yeah. This is the time. Everyone you know, everyone you meet, everyone you run into, reg register them to vote, and then get and, and then get get them to vote immediately. Um, and this we only have until Monday night to to register to vote. So the, the next basically three days are essential. Um, and we, we could I, I think we see the, this election decided in Pennsylvania by it could be 10,000 votes, it could be a thousand votes, it could be 10 votes, it could be some very tiny number. So every incremental person make, is, a, is a huge difference. Um, so, you know, I, I, I haven't been politically active before. I'm, I'm politically active now because I think uh, the future of America and the future of civilization is at stake. Thank so. You. Yeah. So, um, yeah, please go all out registering people. Three, we have three days. Let's go. Um, anything you possibly do. So with, with that, I can, I, I'm happy to uh, answer questions or take comments uh, from the, the audience. And yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Does this mic work? We'll do one question. Yeah. All right. Elon, first of all, welcome to Ridley Township. Thank you. Delaware County, and welcome to Ridley School District and our beautiful high school. Yeah. Because you made this your first stop, we'd love to make an honorary Ridley Raider. Thank you. Sports is big in Ridley, big in Delaware County. This is must, 67 counties in Pennsylvania. We gotta turn every one of them red. Great. Sounds okay, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. here, everybody in this auditorium, everybody watching the live stream, what can we do now to make sure we get Donald Trump across the finish line in Pennsylvania and everywhere else in this country? Yeah, this, it's, it's fundamentally for the next three days, just everyone needs to focus on, on registering friends, family, acquaintances, everyone you know. Because if, if you're not registered by Monday, that's why I'm, I'm being sort of repetitive about this and really emphasizing this, anyone not registered uh, by Monday evening, or if they're registered incorrectly, their vote won't count. They won't be able to vote. So we got three days. Uh, it's all about registration, 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 registration every single day. And like I said, this election could be decided by a handful of people.
It could just be that the, the, a little bit of extra effort on, on voter registration uh, decides the entire future of civilization. So that's why I'm saying, man, this is, if there's ever a weekend to spend going hog wild on registration, this is it. Yeah. yeah. Well, much for being here. It means so much and I think it, it's really in line with your character as I've come to know you from listening to you um, speak in interviews. Um, in addition to voting for Donald Trump, what can the average citizen do to help train I, AI to be truth seeking? Um, well, I think de definitely, you know, publicly pushing to ensure that, that AI is truth-seeking and is, is not sort of politically correct, or which, which is, means factually incorrect. <laughs> um, uh, it, that's, that's a big deal. Like, ha just um, speak out on, on social media um, and, and uh, certainly complain loudly when, when other companies uh, attempt to essentially program their AI with a dystopian San Francisco Berkeley uh, philosophy uh, and if you want to know where that philosophy leads, just just walk around the streets of San Francisco. Uh, be, but be careful, because uh, do not get killed by a violent drug zombie, uh, because they're all over this down, downtown SF. It's insane. Um, so you can see, what, you know, where, where, where does that philosophy lead? And unfortunately, I think a lot of the AIs are being programmed, um, you know, at least implicitly with that uh, misanthropic, dystopian uh, philosophy. Yeah. Hi, Elon, <laughs> right here, <laughs> on your uh, right. Sorry, so the, the lights in my eyes and stuff, it's hard to see, so, yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Jasmine. I'm originally from Malaysia, and I've been here 20 years. I came here legally. I see a lot of immigration, and a lot of immigrants who yeah. came here legally, they all support Trump. And yes. they want a strong economy. Yeah. They want, you know, family values and all that. And um, oh, by the way, I came here because my daughter goes to school here. <laughs> she told me to come over. Um, I used to be really, really active in promoting, you know, Trump campaign four years ago, and I got burned out. And I'm so frustrated. And 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 it's all because of the cheating. So, what are we yeah. going to do with that? Well, the, 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 there is, I think, s some amount of cheating that takes place. It's, it's hard be because they've, you know, when you, when you have mail-in ballots and uh, no, no sort of proof of citizenship, it becomes almost impossible to prove cheating is the issue. Um, so a lot of people, you know, a lot of people in the Dems will say, no, no, no. and I'm like, you've, you've made it impossible to actually prove. That, it's, that, that there's cheating, but the, statistically there are some very strange things that happen that, uh, that, that are statistically incredibly unlikely. Um, so, you know, there's always this sort of question of like, say, the Dominion voting machines. It, it is weird that the, you know, I, I think they're used in Philadelphia and in Maricopa County, um, but not in a lot of other places. Doesn't that seem like a coincidence? So, I think this is a, that this is, you know, I, I mean, we should, in my view, we should only do proof of ballots and count it. A lot of our, the last, last thing I remember, um, it's too, too easy to hack. It's too easy to hack just one line. Um, and it's really difficult to hack paper ballots. So, uh, you know, in, in person voting with, with uh, you know, pr pr proof of, yeah, with, with ID, which by the way, every country has. I mean, like almost every country that, that has democratic elections requires in person uh, voting with voter ID. This is, we're, it's, it's super weird to not have that. Um, I think that's the only way to effectively uh, address fraud. Um, you know, g given that we are where we are today, I think we just need uh, a very big margin of victory. You know, there's, there's, yeah. If the margin of victory is big enough, then it, you know, as they say, it's got to beat the cheat. Yeah. 
So that's it. Elon, um, first off, you're my hero, and I love your sneakers. Thank you. Um, so if you do choose to be the uh, head of the Department of Government Efficiency. Yeah, Doge. Yep. What do you think about we stop giving money to other countries, such as Israel, Ukraine, and we stop funding forever wars that most likely is going to the deep state anyway? Yeah. Well, I, I think in, in general, the, the, the amount of waste that happens with the, with the federal government is, is really staggering. It's a staggering amount of waste of taxpayer money. Um, and if, if we're, you know, for any given expenditure, we have to say, well, what does this do for the citizens of America? Like, how is this good for the people of America? That's, it's their money. Like, for some weird reason, a lot of, you know, a lot of people in uh, the sort of, you know, state or whatever, the politicians, they, they, they seem to forget that the money being spent is, is your money. And, and if it's not spending, being spent in a way that is beneficial to the American people, it's a misuse of the funds. So, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of money that's being spent where, where sort of illegals are getting more benefits than citizens. Like, what the heck is that? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Hi, Elon. So as we bring government spending and look inward to our country, I am a government employee. I care about innovation and efficiency. With your vision for a Department of Government Efficiency, you know, what can we do? How can we support you? And also, how can we spotlight the needs of people in North Carolina? The body count is abnormally underreported. You know, what can we do to press on that and to support people within our country? Sure. Well, I, I, do, think, I do think that uh, you know, it, government efficiency is, is not simply about reducing the size of government, but making sure that there are incentives for, for excellent work. You know, so if somebody's, you know, you, you, whatever you incent will happen. So if you have incentives for excellent work, and if, at, at, by the same token, if someone's not doing excellent work, they're, they're exited, just, just like normal. It's really what happens in a properly functioning company is that you reward, you reward ac or, or, th or think of a sports team. You, the, the players that are doing well, uh, they get rewarded, and the players that are not doing well, they exit the team. And that's, that should just be how it works. Um, and I think that, that'll have a profound effect on the, on the effectiveness of government because so whatever you incent will happen. So if the incentives are aligned with, with you know, with saving Seja people, bem-vindo ao raio universal ciência. Uh, and, uh, then that's what will happen. But if, 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 you know, if you have a one, do you know Alberto Congawala? He's the system manager for uh, Europa Clipper. Oh, which you sent. That's, that's a cool mission, by the way. Which really you sent into space on Monday. Yeah, Thank yeah. you very much. Absolutely. Thank in fact, that, that was a mission where I, I talked to, you know, SpaceX. It's like, you know, every mission is important, but you know, this mission is extra important. Uh, so, yeah, because uh, it, 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 I'm like, you know, I, I want to. I don't. I think like you, like like I think any any most people. I want a future where you look forward to it and you're excited about what's going to happen. That we're going to learn new things. That we're, you know, we're gonna. It's going to be better than the past. Um, you know, and a future where we're, we're a space-faring civilization, and we're out there among the stars, uh, where Star Trek is real, you know? That's exciting. Like, life can't just be about solving one problem after another. There have to be things that inspire you. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a hard one to build, but we, we, at some point we should build a warp drive. Um, but you know, the, but even without the warp drive, the uh, you know the um, Starship, it, the rocket made by SpaceX, is capable of building a city on Mars and a city on the Moon. That's what it's designed to do. But, but we're we're being massively uh, uh, slowed down by regu regulatory molasses. Um, I mean, I'll tell you like a crazy thing. Like we got fined one hundred forty thousand dollars for by the EPA for for dumping fresh water on the ground, drinking water. Crazy. It's crazy. Like, I'm just an example of just how crazy it is. And we're like, well, we just, we're using uh, water to cool the launch pad during launch. You know, we're going to cool the launch pads if it doesn't overheat. Um, and in an excess of caution, we actually uh, brought in drinking water, so clean, super clean water. And the FAA said, no, you have to pay a $140,000 fine. Uh, and we're like, but we let, 
Starbase is in a tropical thunderstorm area, sky water falls all the time. <laughs> that is the same as the sky So, and it's like, we didn't actually, there's no harm to, to anything. And they said, yeah, but we didn't have a permit. We're like, you need a permit for fresh water? Are, are you, what? Yeah, it's just it's just totally crazy stuff like that. And then they, they said, if we don't pay the fine, we, they're not going to process any of our future applications. So they're like, this is the kind of crazy stuff we're dealing with. Yeah. So. All right. Um, yeah. So where were we? <laughs> oh yes, vote, vote. Yes, register and vote early. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's. I would say vote immediately. Um, so. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll take one more question and then we'll call it a wrap. Uh, Elon, this is uh, Matt here. Here, uh, Elon, this is uh, Matt from East West uh, IT uh, Services here, and uh, I'm the uh, chairman for the Pennsylvania Chinese Coalition. Uh, we have uh, more than like uh, uh, 40 uh, Chinese uh, groups and also different kinds of association. And I'm from. Uh, 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 Philadelphia, we are the, the team, and I want to uh, know, could you give us like a, you know, uh, uh, Pennsylvania swing state, as especially in uh, Philadelphia, there's a lot of Democrats, so could you give us like a three in, uh, top reasons why people should uh, vote for uh, Donald Trump? Sure. Uh, well, it's, it, you know, the reasons that resonate are going to be different depending on who you're talking to. Um, but I, I think the, the, you know, these, the, the ones that resonate, for me at least, are, you know, we want, do we, we, we want safer cities, we want a secure border, we want sensible government spending, uh, we want support of the Constitution and the right, to, you know, freedom of speech, right to bear arms. And um, that's what Donald Trump is going to do. So. And, and, and the, the, the other thing I, I think is maybe, you know, a concern is that uh, I think if, if there's four more years of sort of the Kamala sort of puppet regime, uh, they're actually going to uh, legalize so many illegals in the swing states that there won't be swing states anymore. And this will be the last election in that case. And, and we'll be a permanent one-party state like California. And, you know, in California, they, 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 they re in California they, which is mind-blowing, they passed a law banning voter ID for any election in California whatsoever. Now they're going to try, they're going to try to do that nationwide. In fact, they, if they can, they will do it nationwide. If, if, if the Dems win, they'll, they'll ban voter ID nationwide. So that's why I think if, 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 Trump, uh, if Trump doesn't win, this is the last election. Se ainda não se inscreveu, já se inscreva, afinal conhecimento é poder. E curta nosso vídeo para chegar ao alcance de mais pessoas e deixar todo mundo bem informado.